What's up everybody and welcome to another episode of Business and Biceps and you better wake your ass up because on today's show we're going to talk about how you handle the hate. I want to know how Mo handles the hate. Yeah. I want to know how Fosco handles the hate. I'm going to weigh in a little bit because I got some haters myself. There you go. <laughs> Just a couple. But I think, you know, John, we got LinkedIn on today. What's that? And LinkedIn is a monster business yep. that's sponsoring our podcast. Yep. Yep. And they know that we have a lot of professionals that are listening to the podcast. Right. And they want to make sure that, you know, if you're a professional listening to the podcast, that you can find talent on LinkedIn, that they should be there, John. Yeah, I mean, first and foremost, like, um, you know, when you're podcasting, when you start, you start for a reason to just educate. And then all of a sudden you blink and you have a partner like LinkedIn. LinkedIn is it's just an iconic brand in America. Super iconic. And, and uh, I'm proud that the show is aligned with them, number one. And n- number two, um, what they do for professionals is so needed and that's why there's so many professionals on their network i know jobs recruit there yep i'm sorry i know companies recruit there and i know people uh the most talented people go there to seek new jobs so it's really cool that we have the ability to uh, talk about them and partner with them if you're running a business you should be going to find talent on linkedin right jeremy exactly (laughs) all right (laughs) all right so we're gonna we're gonna change it up a little bit and we're going to come out the gate with the fire. I want to know, okay. John. All right. w- w- I mean, Fosco being fired up is kind of a thing, right? We see all these direct <laughs> messages. You got Mo a, Pearly over pain. here. He's smiling. We, I'm sure there's something <laughs> that's become, happening in your brain. Because you're eternally kind of bothered by something <laughs> always. I am eternally, eternally bothered. <laughs> eternally bothered. <laughs> that's a good That's, that's a, a good way to put it. I am this. eternally bothered. <laughs> that's a great that's a good way to start a Monday. Yeah, yeah. So, so John, uh, yeah. tell us, I mean, right out the gate, what's going on, dude? Okay, Why so, are you so fired up? In Fosco's no. world. <laughs> <laughs> what's going on behind the sunglasses and the hat? So, ba- listen, every uh, Monday when we record this and um, Thursday, I, I get in the zone on my way here, and I listen to great music, okay? I listen to musicians that are artists. I listen to musicians that write their own music, that don't have writers, that um, don't write music to be cool, look cool, or, or be popular. And I love my music because it's real music, okay? But as I, as I was listening to it this morning, I'm thinking how many fucking conversations... I've had with people I respect and people I don't respect. And there should be a disclaimer for this segment because some of the words I say I don't mean, but I just got to let it flow. Okay, okay. You got me? <laughs> go go okay, ahead. Okay. So some people I respect and some people I don't respect. And and so many people listen to this hom- homogenized top 40 shit. And I don't, I just don't, I don't fucking understand why, like, all you fucking douchebags, and I'm not, I don't mean everybody, but, like, all you fucking people, like, I like what's on the, oh, did you hear the new Rihanna track? First off, like, no, 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 no. First off, you're a man. Hey, you're I, a, you're, let me answer that. I, I, I didn't I, hear I found, the new Rihanna track. Okay, okay, you know, like, you know, like I found love in a lonely place. Like, like, you, like you're, you're a man. You're a fucking man. I don't know that. Song. Okay, I don't even. E- I don't. I, I don't either. But you're a man, and you listen to shit like that. You listen to fucking all this stupid fucking shit. Uh, uh, uh. Singers who, who who are products who are squeezed out by like the Disney machine and like all they're, they're fucking products that are up on the top forty and there's thirty five year old men there's forty year old men who like listen to it in their car on their way to go run their business and it's like you're listening to an eight. 8- Teen-year-old who was fucking just like if you would have had sex with her three years ago, you'd go to jail. You fucking go to jail. Listen to me, and you're listening to her talk about love and how she got hurt. It's like, like why don't people understand that music is 
art. And, and, and for every mindset and for every personality and for every mood, there's a great artist that makes great fucking music that isn't on the top 40 billboard. That isn't Christina Aguilera or Britney fucking Spears or a DJ like DJ Fuckhead and like all these like fucking guys who wear masks. Dude, there's fucking guys who DJ wear... DJ Marshmallow? Yes, yes. <laughs> There's uh, uh, we, we have an audio problem. Jeremy, uh, good. I don't know if you can hear me or not, yeah, but these can. guys put masks over their head because they <laughs> listen. They know they're such fucking losers that they don't want anyone to see it. All they do is they hit a button and they go, yeah, like this, right? They hit fucking play like someone does on this shit. They hit play and they fucking shit. Well, I don't know what's worse, them or the fucking losers in the crowd who paid to be there and are like, yeah, you hit play. Yeah. It's like, what is wrong with people? What is wrong with people to not have enough of an identity to appreciate real shit? That's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about real shit. I'm talking about stop being a fucking loser and stop being a lemming and like appreciate some real shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, go spend 10 minutes to find out something you like as opposed to going to the Billboard Top 40 and picking something because it takes 10 seconds. I'm glad you're following this up. <laughs> no, it's just, it's so fucking weird. Oh, what's, oh, you like that song, bro? That song's, that song's sick, dude. You know, it's just like, fuck, man. You, I, I hate you. I hate and you. I shouldn't say that. I shouldn't say that, but I hate you so much. No, the oh. entertainment. No, no the, ir- the irony is that oh. like, it, 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 it was almost spooky this, that he just even said that because I was, I was riding here this morning, and I was like, man, I don't see I, 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 Like the importance of music in general, you know what I'm saying? I don't even know where we at with the clock. No, you're good. You're good. You're good. Yeah, yeah. no, but but well, in, in reference to what he's talking about, I was just thinking to myself like the importance of music and how I dial you in. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. And I li- like me, I cut off. I was listening to classical music again on the way here. There you go. But like f- for the for the purpose of what he's talking about, like it being intentional, <sighs> just to like dial my mind in on what I'm what I got going on, and, and just literally just to understand that the music put me in a certain mood. To have me just think about what the day is going to be, going to be about, you know, saying what do I have to do now? What do I have to do when I leave here? Uh, but he's right, you know what I mean? But it's it's crazy how that stuff can just program you, and and, and it does nothing for you. And now he he was a little harsher calling them losers, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like I said, there should be a disclaimer. <laughs> you're you're not necessarily a loser. You just need more of an identity. You need to yeah, just I like got, stop saying, being lazy. I, I agree with you. Like I stop. Agree with you. You're saying go deeper. Uh, no, I, I, I'm saying you're a fucking human being. Don't let the radio or your friends or what's cool tell you what you fucking like. Go like what you like. Yeah. And don't yeah, no, fucking apologize for it. And, 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 I, and I can feel him just because I have a, a different appreciation for like, I was, I, I'm, I've grown to like have an appreciation for instruments. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Just like hearing the pianos and as you know, through classical music, you hear all these instruments you just wouldn't normally pick up on a, on on just something you will push play on through uh, just through music. You're not hearing just a, a beat machine or something. You're hearing like people actually yeah. play instruments and, and all that stuff. And so, I totally get it because it, it then it, it it sets your mood. But but it, it's stuff that you like. You know what I'm saying? I think that's kind of the point of what he's getting at, like having something you like and, and really appreciating it just because it's what you like and, and it's not the top 40 are it's not that's what's being manufactured in your face and i felt it when he said that you know what i'm saying having people push stuff in your face you don't even know if like if you like this or if this is just sitting in front of me you know what i'm saying um it, but i but i totally get it my little section is a whole lot less than, <laughs> than it it's time yeah it's time it, Corey. It, get what's the name yeah. or motion I, I introduce know, the name yeah. i'm not sure where he's going yeah so no, no my, my, my section is called black facts but I, I had to i had to bridge it uh I, I don't know if it's black facts right now or kind of which is what i wanted to discuss uh uh and, and i can label it black facts but uh, just something that I just really wanted to speak on today, and I think the music kind of drove me right here. 
Uh, but it was just um, I, I went to the gym this morning and, and I got up this morning. I always like when it's uh, like 70 degrees outside. You know, like when you go outside and like it's hot early in the morning. And like I enjoy that. Uh, but from the time I got in the car going to the gym, I was just like dialed in and just really like. You know, like when you laser focused on on what you having to on what you got to do, and I got to the gym, and and even though the dude was there to work out with me, I didn't even talk to him the whole time, but I wasn't mad at him. I was just yeah. thinking about what I was like thinking about, uh, and and, and the importance. You know, what I'm saying like, and, and I guess you can call this a fact of how important it is to be dialed in on what you're thinking about. You know, what I'm saying, and um, and I don't know if this is like an entertainment. It, it, it's supposed to be a lot more lighthearted. Uh, but I guess I just want to talk about what I want to talk about. It's your uh, spot, and, though. Yeah, and uh, and I and I and I was at, I was in the gym, and he's next to me, and I'm and I'm working out. I'm not paying him any attention. I'm just thinking about what's going on. But I'm going through the uh, the routine that I have. You know, what I'm saying, and then I'm done with there. I'm going home. You know, I, I jump in the shower. Everything I'm doing just like super meticulous. You know, and I'm like, I got three minutes to do this, five minutes to do this, seven minutes to do this. You, you know what I'm saying? You know how like when you you really drive a clock, you know, so every t- everything means something. And then I'm like, okay, it's going to take me seven minutes to go to the gas station. And then when I get to the gas station, I can get to this pump and I can leave out this exit. And then I'm <laughs> going get, to. I can get to this pump. Yeah. I like that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like when you're planning out the pump. Yeah. I'm, I'm you know, like, this, like this. I got I to get that rear left pump, you know. <laughs> Hey, but this is strategy. I, yeah, but I mean, this is this is where I was at, and, and in my head, you know, on the way here, and, and just even to the point I was communicating to y'all. Okay, make sure you communicate to them. You you know, you're gonna be five minutes late, and, and just trying to just trying to be dialed in. Um, but even here, and even to the point of putting the music on, I was just thinking to myself how important it is just to be like dialed in. You know, saying so just. I'm as, waiting on some James Brown or something. You yeah, know, no, black no, facts. No. Come on, give me some, <laughs> give me something. <laughs> James Brown. I don't, I, but like this, I, I don't have it to like. No, I, I don't have it today. It's just in my head. I'm just dialed in. Like, and, and it's probably been from last week. Like last week, I took, you know, j- just think about this. Last week, I took three six-hour trips Monday through Thursday, and then I took another uh, seven-hour trip in one day. You know, what I'm saying just just driving, going back and forth to doing what I was doing, and I think like that kind of focus just carried on over through the week, and I had some. Uh, I had some letdowns with the food that I was eating on the road. You know, some like as simple I'm as I'm let seems, down, Mo. You let down. I'm let down yeah, by like, your food choices. Oh, oh, <laughs> look, be let down. So, so it's just something about when you pull up to the gas station. It's a fast food right here. Our protein bar right here. I'm like, man, fuck it. I want, I want <laughs> you know, I want, like I want the fast food, not the protein bar. But I, I'll say that's the only part where I where I've let myself down. But but the, but but in the section, and I don't want to listen to the listener. It'll be a lot less hard. It, it will be a lot less serious than what it is right now. But just to the to the listener, and I just I, I guess if I want to take some sort of value out of what I'm saying, uh, it's the importance just at different moments in your life of being completely dialed in on what you're doing and what you're trying to accomplish and where you're trying to take. You know, be it your plans, be it your uh, whatever you're trying to do, just try to take to that next level. And I'm and I'm in a uh, in a season right now in my life where I got a few things that I'm trying to graduate. You know what I'm saying? You just got a few uh, a few things that you're working on that um, your mentality literally drives everything. And I, I read something over the weekend uh, that really like struck me. They said it's not people's lack of um, it's not people's lack of wanting this uh, to like it, it's, it's to the, here's the effect. But like this, this what this was the synopsis of it. It was basically saying there's there's a lack of direction that people have in this world in order to get what they want. So there's not a lack of energy or something like that, but there's, there's a lack of focus and direction that people have in order to get to where they're trying to go. And, and, and that hit me, like, over the weekend. And I was like, man, it really just comes down to where you focus and your energy is at. You know what I'm saying? And I guess that I'm right there because I know what I have to do. I know where I want to go, and I know what it takes. And so every waking moment from getting out to bed to washing my face to jumping in the shower doing everything that I have to do, everything is almost hammered out and, and, and to the point that that nothing is bothering me you know what i'm saying like nothing like there there's nothing that is is happening nothing that's, that's bothering me nothing that's getting in my way it's just all about where i'm at right now where i'm trying to get to where i'm trying to go to but but making sure that i'm being uh patient and and, and focused on what it is that i have to do and so that's just my little two minute three minute four minute five minute rant and and that's just where I'm at right now. Have have you heard of the book, the the one thing? No, I never heard of it. Gotcha. You you, you should definitely check it out because basically. Who's the author, Johnny? You know. Uh yeah, I do. Uh, uh, 
I, I can't remember. Uh, yeah, we'll come back to it. But the one thing is it, it's essentially about one thing having one focus. And if you have one focus like you're talking about and being so dialed into it, that's how – and it traces uh, uh, previous successful people's paths on mm -hmm. how they were just – focused on one thing yeah. and how they dialed in and separated and segmented that one thing but when they got into the five six other focuses they lost it all right yeah it, the one thing is how they got there you, you know you know what this one thing is helping me do too it's, it's helping me to answer questions a lot faster like reese do you want to go here no right you know <laughs> reese do you want to go to golf course no right you know reese do you want to do you want to vacuum the floor no right. I want to I want to I want to focus my attention on this, and that's kind of uh and really to a to a personal standpoint, it's two things that happen with it too. So um, I also say like and it, and it started not just in that area but in other areas, and I, I was driving my. Can I ask you a question real quick because I think it's important for the listener when you say Reese, do you want to go to the golf course? No, so many people uh, feel the need to apologize for just being themselves, right? Yeah. Like I don't want to go to the golf course. But we're still cool. I, I don't want to go to the movie theaters. I, I but we're still course. still cool. So so how how do you for the listener? How do you get to that point where you can just know them real quick and not have any self guilt? Because you shouldn't have self guilt. But yeah. how, how'd you get there? Uh, I just know where I want to go. Okay. You know, and, and I and I think just uh, just having a clear understanding on where I want to go, why I want to get there, and what's important to me, and, and not being apologetic about it. And and I have this thing that I've probably been. Uh, parading over my life, like probably like the last two or three months, just never settle. You know, I'm, I'm in this I'm in this point where I'm not settling for anything, but uh, what, what makes me better or the best when it comes to business. Now, personal stuff, I still have to work on with uh, just dietary habits, but just personal focus on what I want to do. And I guess like anything else, the more you do it or the more you practice it, the more you become dialed in or the, as challenges come up, you know, no different than Corey went to the meet this weekend. The closer you get to these meets or these moments, you start to dial in even, even more because you understand it. And, um, and, and I got about 15 seconds yet. And, and, and so that's just where I'm at, man. I just don't, I, I don't care. Uh, another thing that I was about to mention for you, for you said that, uh, I went like, so I'm just holding down or cutting the fat off my life on what I want. And I was driving my daughter to a, a basketball practice and uh, I just told her, I just, I just wanted to come up my mouth. And I said, uh, for the summertime, you know, I'm going to make you my priority. For the last two years, she's been a second thought, you know what I'm saying? Because the business has been first. And, and, and we've had times where she's been, or my family's been important. And the business has been important. Uh, but I've gotten to the point where uh, I've set the business in order. I've created the structure. And I've told these people, hey. My family's important, and if I have to come here to address what needs to be addressed, y'all leave, and because and, I'm not about to do this all day. I'm not about to babysit you all when I could be spending time with my, my family. You know what I'm saying? And it's not to say that they will forever, um, like everything will take a backseat to them to spend time around them all the time because I understand that uh, there will be times that they'll have to be the sacrificial lamb while I handle business. That's, that's cool. But for the past two years, they've been there's been a 90-10 relationship, 90% business, 10% right. my family. And just, you know, you, you look at your daughter. My daughter's going into the eighth grade. I'm like, yo, you know, she only has like five more years yeah. within this. You know, f five years is not a long time. Some, some dudes are going to start showing up at the house soon, hey, man. This is, I ain't trying to it, date. I would not. <laughs> that's hey. a real thing. You know, yeah. that's hey. a real thing. So, uh, you know, it'd be real if they came to your house and your ass walks up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> They'd be you like, know, wait a second. Yeah. I, know, wait, I know what this guy uh, has in him. I don't think I want to mess yeah. with this. Let's meet at my place. <laughs> yeah. but, so, but but to focus, you know, that, that's just it, – it's like, like yo, like dial in on what you're doing. Dial in on – and like even today, it's intentional. I'm dialed in on – like I've put – and it sounds simple, but I was being selfish in a way – yoga's coming behind my daughter you know what i'm saying like making sure when i leave here after i get done with my meetings we're doing something every day to make sure that we're spending quality time uh throughout the day after i handle my business but you know yoga's a luxury you know what i'm saying so i can get the yoga later on after i give her her time but that's sort of like my black fact moment there you go a lot we're more joy we're, uh, we're only two minutes over we're doing good mo there we go we're doing better <laughs> haven's gonna get us in shape all right so my thing is kind of to what marie said is i, I went to a meet this weekend and I started to think, like, what was something I could bring up that would provoke some motivation and thought based around that? And it really comes down to 
most people still aren't competing at anything when they're like 40 years old. Now you can go to a 5K. Joe yeah. does. I know 100%. Johnny, you compete in business every day. That's 100% your sport. There's no <laughs> doubt about that in my mind. But most people that once they are done playing high school sports, they're just done competing. Yes. They go to their job. They really don't compete. They don't think about competition. Don't get the don't butter. They don't it. get the butterflies of competition. Yes. And so for yes. me, even at, at this point in my career, to put myself out there like that, I don't know that I get much financial gain from competing. I think the, the around it, I think the the content that creates from it is part of part of my business. But it's that same thing as before you run out from the football field or the basketball yes. court. It's hard to feel that when you're older. I mean, my stepdad came and cheered me on no just, like, just like a parent would right. when you're in high Yeah, exactly. So it's interesting that uh, I'm still able to experience what that is t- 20 years after high school, which a lot of people mm-hmm. don't get to do. And I think that there's something in that kind of – there's something special about that that's helped progress me all this time. And, and, I don't, and, and, and I look forward to it. I enjoy putting myself out there because, for instance, I walk up – there was a kind of a technicality right on my first squad. I walk up and uh, I have with, on my suit, I had my straps down. And the guy said, and for, for you guys that don't know what that is, like it looks like a singlet basically. And there's no rule that says you got to have them up over your shoulders. You can have them kind of hanging. And, and for me, that's just the way I like to do it. So I walk up, wrapped up, hyped up, 680 pounds. And the guy says, put them up. And I said, yo, there ain't, there ain't no rule. So I'm arguing with the head judge for squat. Right out the gate. And Ramos is backspotting me, and he's just like, fuck this motherfucker. Just put him up and smoke this shit. So right out the, go, right out the gate, it's you're, you're going to get your rival in football. It come, you know, the juices are flowing. What I do, smoked it, right? And then all of a sudden, it's like now it's on. And it was just on the whole day. And it's one of those things where I think it's so hard in everyday life to get that way. And I, I think agree. that that is such a huge part of me that I've been able to keep for all this time. And, and so I guess what my point is, is like, if there's something you can figure out, it might not be as drastic as powerlifting. It could be your local 5K and you just push in, you know, that your time is better from, from or to beat your friend on the street, even if she don't know Man, it's what you're trying do, to do. To just, to just do, do it. it uh, yeah. To put yourself out there. Absolutely. So I think my, my big thing is like, try to put yourself out there that's going to give you the butterflies. Yes. And, and, and to some degree, it could be public speaking. It, there's, a, there's a lot of different things that do these things for different people. And I think feeling that, it keeps you just feeling a little bit alive. Uh, I, I, I give you this. You know, my fault. I, I, I give you this. There's it, – it, when you're going through school, the platform is already developed. Basketball season, football season, track season, yep. baseball, whatever – as an adult, this stuff is out here. It's just you signing up you to, to say, I'm going to do it. These 5Ks existed. I just was bitching out and avoiding them. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it kept, because, you know, because it, it takes too much responsibility. Like, okay, if you want to run this 5K, that means your ass has to be in the gym running before. Preparation. Yeah, and you have to keep on doing it. But the joy you feel. But I also, as you were talking, I bet you – that mentality of getting together and doing these uh, weightlifting competitions has creeped over into your business, the mentality oh, no in, in, oh. in other areas. has and my whole life. It's pers- What I love about it and, and uh, what I can liken it to is, sure, I'll, I'll do physical stuff, but at, at the end of the day, I love to find people and partners to, to spar with because I think uh, from a competitive standpoint – just around, You're talking about mental sparring. No, no, physical. Oh, good. yes, yeah, yeah. So, um, f- just just from a competitive standpoint, when the accountability is one million percent on yourself, and there is something to lose, right? You could lose your pride, you could lose your ego for a moment or moments if that uh, deadlift smokes you and you don't smoke it, yeah. right? And it's if, all on you, right? If I yeah. if I get in there and I get dropped by a jab, like okay, <laughs> l- no, yeah. it happens. It happens. It happens. Yeah. Uh, uh, but but it's the I I I I I compare it to this. For me, I feel most alive in that moment where it's like okay, all right, we're dancing. Like if I catch one, I'm going down. Like to me, that's like um, when you're most alive because anything can happen. Dude. The responsibility is all on you. And yes. afterwards, even if you do 
even if you do take a fall, even if it doesn't work out your way or it does, but let's say it doesn't, you still feel like, man, I went in there. I fucking yes. stepped the fuck up. I conquered my fucking fear and I'm ready to go back. And I'm addicted to that motherfucking feeling like that shot wasn't that bad. That, I'm a, you know, that's exactly what it is, John. So like two meets ago. You know, in powerlifting, if you don't get a squ- if you don't get one of the three lifts, and so you got squat, bench, and deadlift. If you miss and don't like make one of those, you're done. Like you bomb out. That's what it's called. So like if you get all what three, so if you get all three of your squats, or even one squat. Let's say I got one squat and I didn't get any of my benches. You can't deadlift. You're done. Oh, I didn't know that. All right. So basically, <laughs> like two meets ago, I missed my first two squats. I had to get my third one or I was sit down. They just sit you down. Like, you're just, you're just out. You can't even finish. Can't even finish. So, walking up to say, well, I just missed 699. Now, I either get it or I'm in the, or I'm in, I'm so in the audience. Says, can you drop weight? Can no, you drop? Oh. can never go down. So, let's say you, so that's the hardest thing in, in powerlifting or anything lifting is to miss a weight. And then you have to be on the hook on the third attempt to say, if you don't get this, you're in the audience. Just like everyone else. And so, so drop. that's the the point that John's talking about is that it's on you. You got to nut up basically and get it. So I, that's where I like it the most right. because oh, I, I think to, pu- to push yourself to that level, um, you know, on your own for no monetary. There's no money involved in this. There's a half time I don't even stay for the trophies. It's like it's more about that feeling of saying, "Gee, it's you. You're on the stage. There's all these people, and you either get it or you don't get it." And, and, and to go to that spot to think, I'd rather go to the hospital and not get this, like, that that's what I think. That's literally No what excuses. I think. It's on you. That's literally but what I, I think I, when I walk up. I, I respect. It gets it just moving, Mo. But, but, I, but I think, and, and I'll say this, because I, 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 through the years I've done a tremendous amount of trainings of other things, right? Fight training, and I've never done powerlifting, weightlifting training for anything, but the singular thing of just – fighting and it's all on you you know football is a team sport you know what i'm saying but when you think of weightlifting but weightlifting doesn't have an opponent against it uh the 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 opponent is the weight Mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying but when i sometimes when i think about the 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 fighting and just being out there by yourself i can understand that the um and even getting there and sparring that it's all on you you're all in the ring you're all by yourself so i can get the mentalities you know what i'm saying Where, where there's no help it's just you if you don't make it if you don't stand up if you don't if you, you ain't think, prepared. If, if you ain't prepared, you know <laughs> what I'm saying? Either the weight's going to kick your ass or the other person's going to kick your ass. And, and one, that, that's a humbling thing because I've been, you know, I, I, don't, I don't know if I sp- spoke about it on the podcast or I was telling somebody about it. When I first got out and I was sparring over in Dublin, you know, this dude was just clipping me. Boom. You know, he just clipping me. Boom. Just straight off a of technique. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And it, it don't matter how big you are. don't matter how yeah. nothing. And, and, and fighting and just just even what through weightlifting it is just technique you know what I'm saying Absolutely. do you have the appropriate leverage do, do you have these um excuse me do you have the appropriate techniques rather to uh to to get weight up you know what I'm saying do you have the appropriate techniques to counter off of people or to to expose you know the, the person who's in front of you and so I, I get that mentality and I get the joy of it uh because every time I've ever even been in sparring. Uh, I've always felt better after I was done, you know, because either I learned something that I said uh, I, I need to get better in or or I've been humble, you know, what I'm saying to well, say sparring is hey, completely uncomfortable. Oh, <laughs> dude, <laughs> it's the worst. Uh, yeah, the, the fucking worst. All right. So good job on that. John, I think you let it off. Well, hey, man, my back sweating. You know, that, 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 that's, that, that, that's how I, I te- or three. Yeah. So I think we roll right in. Mo, I'm going to have you start with um, how. Do you manage the hate? I mean, you were on Ultra Blast, mm-hmm. ESPN, magazines, every time. I mean, th- the amount that has came your way in your life of some form of hate or talking or this is astronomical. Mm-hmm. And it's just amazing how you've been able to handle it. And it, I think it would be interesting to kind of start off this topic that way. Yeah, and now, uh, to, and now in a different kind of hate, probably nowadays potentially. Yes, so I, I guess I can. I don't know if I start frontwards, backwards, backwards, front, or whatever. Um, but now I've I've um, understood how to channel it. You know, mm-hmm. saying, but uh, the biggest thing is that through channeling, uh, I have understanding. You know, and I think I think when you're younger, you don't have an understanding of why people uh, talk shit, or uh, you don't understand where it comes from or how it comes. And the older I, the older I've gotten, the more I realize that just people just talk, you know, and most people talk without thinking, 
you know, are are yeah. the popular thing to talk shit becomes the easier thing. And so, you know, uh, I, and, and I'll switch gears and I'll come back. But, you know, uh, a lot of times, like when I see somebody going through something, uh, like I always talk about Johnny Manziel when he was going through his, his things in a major way. Uh, if you've been through something and you really understand that you've been beat up through life and beat up through circumstance, it's real hard for you to talk shit on other people. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. uh, because you start to realize, like, you know, sometimes people in life just be going through shit. They may not be aware of the decisions they're making uh, just because a person's popular. It doesn't necessarily merit that they have the ability to make sound decisions and, and, and things of that nature. And so, you know, not, now I'm in a place where I empathize, but then I also understand that people just talk shit just because um, that's a reflection of themselves. People, people typically uh, criticize and project their way of thinking or their way of feeling onto other people. So uh, if, if John is going through some shit, you know, it's easy for me to talk shit on John because that's how I feel about my own life. Mm -hmm. And then I'm projecting those shits on John like, oh, look at John having a hard time. Look at this motherfucker um, uh, not accomplishing. You know what I'm saying? Look at him, you know, a, B, C, D, E, F, and G, and, and so that becomes that. So me as a person, as people are criticizing, I'm realizing that they're doing nothing more than talking about themselves. Yes. And so it does nothing but it, it does nothing but like okay, but not to say I don't still feel when people talk shit because you don't want people to talk shit, but it's easy for me to internalize that and just always remember that <clears throat> whatever is being said just ultimately doesn't matter. You know what I'm saying? And to engage in stuff like that for me is more of an act of mercy on them, you know, and, and me really saving myself. Because if I reacted to, one, if I reacted to everybody who talks shit about me, I'd be fighting a lifetime. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> well, I'd be, yeah. you know, I, yep. I'll, I'll have to fight every fucking day of my life. And, you know, I'll be calling motherfuckers out every day for every small thing, and it's not really worth it. But then also... You have to be so disciplined, Mo, because I, I, I found myself wanting to punch motherfuckers in the bar when they talk shit when I'm wearing your jersey. Yeah, I saw good. <laughs> yeah. You're like, gee, you ain't going to do that. I'm like, man, yeah. fuck that dude. Nah, it, it, it's all... <laughs> but, 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 but then it's, it, it's... And I'm not saying I'm the toughest guy in the world, but then it's an act of mercy... Uh, because I, I always tell them like they don't they don't know what they're doing they don't even they don't yeah. even they don't even know um, these people can be a clear and present danger with me you know what I'm yeah. saying like clear and present danger they have no clue and then for me to react in a certain way is totally different from them like if I got serious it'd be like I'm pretty sure it'd be like oh sorry bro I was just playing you yeah, know so if if I really got serious with them you know what I'm yeah. saying and so it's easier um, just to respectfully John you don't like me hey fine brother listen uh -huh. me love you too. You know, going about your business. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and like you say, we have the ability. John just separate his fingers. For those who aren't listening, he separated his fingers like, you know, two people parting ways. You know, we have the ability to be uh, – or, or, or the responsibility to be a lot more wise for a person who's talking shit, right? You know, people who are a little bit more mature and they're thinking, people who are responsible, people who get life, people who've been through – real circumstances and understand that where shit talking can lead to and where it can go and how stupid things can get and how violent things can get. And, and I've lived a life around people saying some shit and things just going way left field. It's, it's important for the wise person to be thoughtful for John. And I'm just using John cause I'm looking at him. Right. So I need to do the thinking for John. Uh, and I can only reference prison because I've seen guys talk a lot of shit or hate on people in prison mm -hmm. and things just go boom. They blow up real fast. Guys get their ass kicked. They get, you know, uh, you know, shit thrown on them, like literally shit, like out your ass shit. You know what I'm saying? Uh, guys get bust upside the head. You know, guys yeah. getting cut up and stabbed. And so when you've seen the um, – Not only talking shit but throwing shit on them. Yeah, dudes, they 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 piss in a they piss in a milk carton and they shit in the milk carton. They stir it up and they throw it on guys. You know, this is like oh no, that's you know, a foul motherfucker. This happens all the time. Ooh. You know, motherfucker talking shit. Are you talking shit on me? I'll stir. I'll shit in a cup, piss in a cup. I'll stir it up and then I'll throw it on you. Like you can't do nothing about it, but get shit thrown on you, right? Right. And so Damn. you you seen this crazy? Sh you, you, literally, you seen this crazy shit. And so you just like I'm I'm wise now, you know, and and. The way, I, the way I handle it is I, I'm responsible for myself, but I'm also comfortable being responsible for John if John doesn't know any better. Right. Because people who typically – people who've typically been through shit knows that let's try to avoid problems at all costs. Not because we're scared of each other, but just because this is Conflict, not, everybody loses. Yeah, it, everybody loses. You know what I'm saying? And so I don't want to get into people, you know, um, things come on the internet. I don't really care. 
Um, it, it it doesn't really bother me, but Plus but you're not looking for it anymore. No, either, but Mo. no, but but these people like, and, and I'm trying to educate the people who do the hating. Just like ask yourself, what does that say about you? Like, there's there's nobody right. out here. That's like, I talk shit about people in a joking way. I'll joke, uh, you know, and, and a person will know I'm joking, but I'll never say anything harmful harmful to a person with with malice. Like, I'm just right. 34. I'm not going to say anything. Like, if John, if I, if I don't really want to harm somebody. I'm not going to, or I, if I really don't want a confrontation, I'm not going to have a level of malice in my voice where you're going to even think that I want to do it. Right. I'm going to try all these outs. Like for for me, if you deal with me, I'm going to try about 35 things to avoid this thing to save both of us. You know what I'm saying? So I can I can go out of here, you can go out of here, and if you feel like you run the uh, the, the royal rumble of words, you know what I'm saying? All right, cool, my brother. That's all right. You got that. Right. I'll go home and sleep sleep well, but. Right. That, that's how I choose to. Ha- that's a maturity of the situation. Yeah, yeah you know, yeah, yeah, when, you, when you're is. younger, though, just think about this: when you're younger, everybody. It, it's two things. When you're younger, three things. When you're younger, um, when you're under the influence of alcohol or drugs or something like that, people get into so much shit. Uh, or when there's women involved, you know, what I'm saying Th- those, yeah. those three things like seem to like flare up egos and and people uh, do things that they they, they shouldn't do, but. For me, where I'm at in my life right now, I just don't even care about the hate. And even I hear from people or somebody come, hey man, you know what this person said about you? Like, uh, I, I don't, I don't really shit. care. It doesn't even bother me anymore. But that's sort of like my two cents. Yeah, like man. I, I stayed I, in time too. Good job. Yeah. I, 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 oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I'll take it to online. You know what I'm saying? I, I think a lot of people can relate to their Instagram feed and their Facebook and uh, their Twitter. And if you notice that when you post something or you're receiving hate, it comes in waves. And, I, and I'm, ex- I'm trying to explain this because I, I want people to try to understand human psychology. Um, if you, for Johnny Q listener, if you post something and you get these positive remarks, they seem to come in waves. Oh, positive, 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 positive. Then if you see a negative remark, it's like there's a wave of negative remarks. And and, and they come in waves. They're, they're typically not people standing on their own t- two feet that do the hating. So if the hating comes in waves, you need to understand, number one, that it's not personal. Number two, that these people are feeding off each other because they have no sense of self and they just want to um, digitally high five each other. So I, kn- I know we all live in this hyper competitive followers, likes, engagement, social media world, which is which is a fake world. It's an e world. It's an online world. And I, my my point in describing this is that I don't want anybody to um, read something about themselves or see something uh, and feel depressed or feel angry or do what the individual did wrong um, to cause the situation and talk shit back to them because then you start this vicious cycle and you're let I always talk about letting others control you right if someone's talking shit and you come back at them with shit well you're no better than them and you're dropping yourself to their level and now the energy, right? Like we always talk about energy on the show. Now the energy is like you're in this space of like anger and fuck this dude. And I can't wait for him to reply next. So, oh, I got a good one to hit him with. It's like you have become what this person who has commented has made you. And that in and of itself is negativity manifesting. So I like to expect the worst and hope for the best so if you're going to play in this world this online world of social media which i'm going to i'm trying to take this topic to understand that it comes with extreme judgment on both sides um and you got to take everything with a grain of salt take the good um and don't and, and, and don't lift it so high Take the bad. Don't lift it so high. Understand that's the landscape and understand why you're doing it. Why are you expressing yourself on social media? Well, it's probably to promote a business, uh, promote yourself, 
or connect with family. Remember, that's why you're there. You're not there to get into verbal fistfights with people, but people will start verbal fistfights with you every fucking day. And it is not mandatory, nor is it acceptable, nor is it beneficial to strike back. So as hard as it is, you need to say to yourself, and I'm trying to give you guys takeaways, you need to say to yourself, am I any better than this person if I strike them like they struck me? It's that simple. Am I any better? And am I contributing to anything positive if I hit back? And the answer is always no. So I think it's just important to have awareness in this in this online. I don't know you, but I'll talk to you. I'll talk shit to you. I'll praise you. This this world that's full of people that say things. I think it's important to just take everything with a grain of salt and just be like, all right, keep the don't let the highs get too high. Don't let the lows get too low and expect it. So when it happens, it's not a surprise. No. And you can just roll. I take that Jay Z approach, right? What do you say? Um, when you argue with with fools. Well, I think a wise man told me don't argue with fools because a person from a distant can't, can't tell who's who is who. who. There it is. And I think that's the approach when it comes to exactly what Johnny was just talking about. So I got this email one time, and the subject line was, "I was a Corey G hater." That was the subject line, right? So I'm reading this email. And this guy's like a just a huge supporter of mine now, and he said, he said, man, I've been following you for a long time, but every time you posted, I hated on it. Every time you posted, I hate not like outwardly hated, like it, he never would write anything, but internally, right? And then he said, and then I started listening to what you were saying, and then it started making my life a little better, and then I started getting myself in shape. Then and he said, what I realized was, I was so upset with myself. That I, wanted, that I wanted to hate you. 100%. Even though you wasn't doing nothing but trying to help me. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, 100%. And, and it was like probably one of the coolest emails I ever got. And it, this dude's name's Eric, and I still I always respond back to him online. I just thought it was so cool that he was just like, it wasn't that I was so great. It's what he was working through. Oh. I was, you know, I was trying to project some type of positivity, and he was just resisting it so much. But then once this dude switched it around, man, he's killing it now. It's and it's awesome. No, but but as he say as he says that, I can remember when I was going through some of the roughest times of my life, I was the biggest hater, internally, yes. right? <laughs> and so nobody would ever know, but I would see another person who was doing what I did and having success at what I've done, or I wanted to do, and I knew myself how I would feel towards that person, and everything was if it wasn't just me saying like. Yeah, so so no man will ever come to say, man, Johnny Fosco, I'm jealous of you. Like that's right. not cool. Right. Like no, no, right. nobody's go, no nobody's going to say that, right? I got to say like, man, fuck Fosco. You see, right. he, he always wear fucking glasses. Yeah, he's a I, bitch. I, 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 I got to make something up to right. make Fosco look yeah, bad, but exactly. I'm projecting it. So I want the listener to know as I was talking, this guy Eric, I can identify with that and say I think everybody can. Mo. That's how I was thinking at the time. That's how sure. I know. You hate on me, ain't, it ain't a me thing. It's a you thing. Think about the ceiling you create for yourself when you're like that. Yeah, and that's and that's what absolutely. I, and that's what to your point and Johnny's point. Like I started to get to where when it, it flipped on the other side, I'm like, it's really them limiting themselves, and I feel bad. So the the maturity has came out to where it's not like strike back. It's like no, it's like you know until they figure it out, they're gonna be stuck there. Hey, hey, like 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 my man said, love thy enemy. Yeah, you, I mean, you, you know what I'm saying? It's like those are the people that really need support. So if we're going to talk about, oh, we want to help people, oh, we want to do good, well, do we have the strength to take someone who says, hey, you're a fuckhead, Fosco, and say, hey, listen, man, let's get on a phone call. I'd like to talk to you and give him my time because that's the guy yeah. who's struggling. Yeah, you that's see, the guy you who needs help. You a negative into a positive. A lot of times the funny thing is if I do respond, I usually respond, love you too. <laughs> hey, there's nothing you can say back to that. <laughs> oh man, I, I'm I'm telling you, and like even as you start to like even as you started to talk about that, even love thy enemy, like it, it, but even for you, the person being hated on, it just takes you mentally and spiritually to a different level, because every time you don't buy into that shit, it reinforces something in you, 
course. That this isn't the way I want to live because you can you can step down from that stuff and become of the stuff that is going on. You can become the, the uh, like they say, don't don't be a part of the circus. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You can jump right into the circus, but and this this is for people who are hating, right? And I was I was talking about this and thinking about this last night, but it fits to what we're talking about. The only thing that separates people who are perceived, because success is all perception anyway, you know, it's all relative in, right. too, right? But l- let's talk about the commercial level of success that people seem to hate on in life. The only thing that separates people is the res- the level of responsibility that people who are perceived to be successful have versus the people who are perceiving themselves not to be successful that they don't have. And all successful people do is just say, hey, I'm going to take a set of responsibilities and consistently deliver on them, right? Yep. And then the world and says – Responsibility and, and, and risk. And the world says, I'm going to reward you for that, right? Yep. And the unsuccessful person just can't stay consistent with doing things that reap the good rewards or take the appropriate risks to make themselves successful. And so when you think about it, it's just a responsible person versus an unresponsible p- person – and consistently doing something. I can go on my phone right now, and I told my guy last night, we were talking, this had to be about like 8.30, and I said, man, look, you know, uh, 70% of the shit that I do on a daily basis, I don't feel like doing. But (laughs) separating what I don't feel like doing and what I have to do is like, I think my ultimate talent. And I think that if you look at great prize fighters, uh, I just watched, you know, Bud Crawford and the Charlo brothers fight this weekend. And I, I think one of the, be- the best fucking things, and even uh, if you go to UFC fighting, I think some of the most best fucking films is like those short films before a fight where you talk about what, what the guy went through through camp. I think like those are like the most, you know, like they short, they seven minutes, but it gives you the feel. It, discipline, it, it gives you the feel. Dude, yeah, but, I know. I, I just want to say like it's so relevant because this, this weekend it was one of the greatest title fights I've ever seen. Um, in UFC history, Robert Whitaker, middleweight champion versus Yoel Romero. And Robert Whitaker is uh, he's, uh, probably the, most, the heaviest handed boxer in the 185 pound division. He busted his pistol, his right hand. He broke it all the way up to his elbow in the first round. I mean, that's like losing your, your, your nuclear weapon. If you're going Absolutely. to war, and he's fighting an animal, yeah, yo, Romero an, is an animal. animal, and all he's and 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 and, and Yoel realized it in the second round because he was just jabbing and throwing right high kick, and I mean he like would turn his body. This dude got dropped twice in the fifth round, and he just kept trying to kick. What'd you this, do? What'd you do? I, Robert Whitaker. Okay. Uh, yeah, and he kept jabbing, trying to kick Yoel in the head, and 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 he literally couldn't feel his arm. And um, he ended up winning the title fight, and people don't understand wow. the kind of like 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 they oh oh that's great he's a fighter he broke his arm no 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 dude couldn't feel from his hand to he said he didn't know if his if his bones were hanging he didn't know anything but in that moment it didn't fucking matter yeah, he had one fucking goal and if he had to jab and high kick and get he got dropped twice in the fifth dropped by fucking hammers yeah and he kept coming he all looks like a bodybuilder he is jacked dude and he's the most explosive yeah. guy in the ufc probably and oh by the way he's a fucking olympic wrestling Wrestler, yeah. fucking uh bronze medalist so a- a- anyways when, when you were saying that it's it, it's just like it's yeah it can be embodied very easily through watching fighting but it's like there are people out there who just know what they want and you could fucking cut off their arm, and they're still going to go get it. And there's so much we can learn from those people because guess what? There's no excuses. He was not willing to accept in his head, right? Because it's always a choice. 100%. Man, my heart, arm's broken. Hey, doc. my he, He's lying to the doctor between every round. I'm good. I'm good. Do <laughs> he, you know what that feels like? He, he could have accepted that excuse. Exactly. And say I lost the fight because my arm was broken. 100%. 100%. 100 percent but 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 to me and this is to help the hater understand himself right like maybe you've accepted those excuses right yes to justify your reality that's like, why you ain't winning no championships th- that's why you're not winning but, but as as casual as you say that's the fucking reason you're not winning them because every day there's an excuse on 
why I can't. Why I can't, based upon how you want your reality to look. If you say, okay, man, dude, th- this is the bottom line. Success takes fucking responsibility on a heavy basis every day. Building max effort is one thing. Maintaining and growing and having success is a totally different other. There's nothing that you all did to build this thing that takes it to make sure that it's maintained and growing everything else. And those guys who can't, who, who, who don't have the discipline to do that, those are the guys who fail and then they've given up and then it becomes, there's only a chosen few people who say, I got the fucking balls to do this over and over again. Right. There's more people who give up than there's more people who succeed. And the world doesn't like to be that blunt about it, but it is, it's the you truth. know. And it's, 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 right. it, it, it's just like, the, what's those things, uh, the, the fucking monkey bars? You go to, as a kid, and life is almost like this. Those who just hold on, right? Just line up 10 motherfuckers and, like, just stretch your arms all and say, let's hold on, motherfucker, right? As soon as it gets a little tough, first bitch-ass dude fall right. off, boom. <laughs> so Look at true. those other bitch-ass dudes up there holding on. He's only holding on because of X, B, Y, and Z, right? Then the next dude falls off. Then the next dude falls off. And then the dude who really wanted, he's up there. You know, he's using core strength. He's using every fucking thing he has. And that's he's looked at as the winner. But life is a lot like that. There are just choices along the way right. based upon what do you want the outcome of your life to be. And as soon as you give up, you just sit right there and be like, okay, I'm going to just hate from this perspective. You know what I'm saying? I think one important thing that, that just, in general – if you're listening and you know that, man, I hate or, 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 or I talk shit or when I see this person, I don't know why, but I get mad, right? That, that's a big thing with people like, like um, they, they get mad when they see certain people and typically, typically it's because those people have things that they want um, that they don't have. But yes. it's, it's amazing when you think about this, like if everybody stopped and made a fucking rule no judgment. I am not allowed to judge anybody. It, it, it's, it's, it's stunning to me how many people feel that they have the right to judge another man or judge another woman and judge their decisions because I think that's where this all stems from is the, like, what happened, what happened to, like, only God can judge, right? Like, like we can't. I don't have the right to judge your decisions. I don't have the right to judge what houses you're looking at, what fucking jeans you're fucking with. Like, who the fuck am I? Like, like, why don't people say, I got to focus on me and this judging of other people. What is it literally doing for me? What is it doing? Holding you back. Right. That's what it's doing. I, I, I give you the flip side of that, too. Oh, my fuck, go ahead. Yeah, no, I don't know if you don't know. The, the, the flip side of it, even the flip side of this, and this is just this is something to help the person who's being hated on as well. You know, I wanted to give like an understanding for the guy who's doing hating, but then also uh, for the flip side of the guy who's getting getting hated on. One way, and and I missed this when you first asked me first. The first part of you know how do I handle it, it is John triggered it when he said people are jealous of people who have things that they don't have. And I think for the person who's getting hated on outside of saying, like, these people don't really fucking matter is not taking validation or not or your your um, self-esteem isn't made up off of compliments or uh, people speaking shit about you. You know what I'm saying? And so I've gotten to a point where I'm like, I don't even give a fuck whether the person gives me a compliment or they hate on me. Like, how right. I live my life and how I think of myself isn't, is more made up on a... Yes. Isn't what, dictated by that. No, no. And, and that, that's a whole paradigm to even get out of. I think that's like a high schoolish paradigm. Yes. Like, you know, if I have like the... Like, you know, my car has to be the newest year or my jeans or my... Like, I got on $40 Levi's. And I, I just like them because they jean material that stretch. And like, I'm a bigger guy. And so, like having cool jeans, getting those stretch. quads and jeans, yeah, are interesting. yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, like that's the only thing I give a fuck about. I don't give a fuck if they like exactly whatever name brand. But I think Mo also coming from, you know, the stuff that you were doing at your national championship, going to be incarcerated, the the swings of what you went through, you you just mentally, most people don't have to go through that big of a swing to come back because you got everything pulled away from you, yeah, but, including but the, your freedom. So it's like, it's got to be like, you're so, I, I don't know, I've known you for long enough. It's You're so thankful. You're like, man, whatever you're saying, I, I'm like. Man, dude, <laughs> let me tell you this. Thankful is it, thankful and grateful yeah. would be two 
words to describe. I was in uh, a, a barbecue place yesterday, right? You ever? Uh, you should have, they got some good. Uh, I don't know if y'all like brisket, but I like brisket, right? Brisket. Oh, yeah. You ever heard of Dickie's Barbecue? Mm-hmm. I don't know, right? So it's this place way out in here that I was going to look for a house. And through the process of doing that, uh, I stopped at this little barbecue place. I'm like, okay, at least you can get some here, shit here that isn't fried. That was my, my whole yeah. thing was just getting meat that wasn't fried, right? Or getting something that wasn't fried. So I stop here. I'm eating the food. And I promise to you, as I'm sitting here, I'm just sitting here. And I was like, man, you know, and I talked to a lot of guys who are still in federal prison and state prison. And I was sitting there and I was like, man, like I'm thankful and grateful and it made me feel good to just say I can sit and eat and take my time while I eat and I can afford food, right? I can afford food, like, as simple as that seems to you, to you, to everybody who may be listening, like, I was grateful for that. That made me feel good. Not like if John Fosco said, yo, man, I'm glad you scored touchdowns if you see me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> or I'm glad that you got the new ride outside. And so I guess when you go, like, even – that's I think that's why I, like, maybe attracted – spiritually to your mother because your mother functions outside of the thing world right. and people who tend to like function outside the thing world those are like beautiful spirits you can like that's why i appreciate the sound from classical music like i'm starting to appreciate different things in my life because the things don't matter and that doesn't contradict me wanting to be successful in business wanting to be successful in business is more of a what do you what, what do you feel you can accomplish yourself more as a Get your ass up, hold yourself accountable, focus on something, be driven with something, do a good job at something, but also have enough common sense to understand margins in business. And it has more to do about the personal side than the I want to go out here and just buy a bunch of shit. If that makes any sense to it people makes, listening to it, it makes yeah, total yeah. sense. Sometimes, you know, you know, sometimes when you talk, you don't think it makes sense. Right, right. But go ahead, my fault. No, no, no. But no, buy, buying shit has nothing to do with with business. And I think what no. you're talking about is literally whatever it may be, whatever level. It may be fulfilling your potential. Yes. You want to make sure. Fulfill, there we go. Fulfilling yeah. my potential. That's exactly that, that what it is. That you just get the most out of you while yes. you're here. Yes. And and, 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 and and I think if we can define success and rip the, 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 the price tags off it or the salaries off it or the cars and the houses off it, it's just fulfilling your potential as a human being. And that may be literally being the general manager at a Home Depot. I mean, that, that may be. And, and that is fucking awesome. If, yeah. if that if that's you fulfilling your potential, um, everybody has different levels. Else, and don't be mad if somebody else fulfills theirs. No, that's, that's what be the I, I've no one. I've never heard success be defined like that. But I'm taking that forever. Yeah, yeah everybody's everything. Everybody's is different. Yeah, but but to hear fulfilling your potential, and I've never when, when you think about success, I've never because I've had people say define success. You know what I'm saying? Sure. And I've always defined it like just being happy that I can control my time. Sure. Like, but I, I, I would, but I would say that the definition you just gave trumps me saying fulfilling my. I mean, controlling my time was one thing, but fulfilling my potential because I guess that put, puts words on things that I've always wanted to discover. I, I've always wanted to just everything that I'm trying to do is to get the best, be the most efficient, and just do a great job at what it is that I'm doing. Like, even when we were when I came here, I was so focused on what else I had to do. And I'm looking at Corey start to read this thing, and I was able to dial in and say, okay, I'm here now. You know what I'm saying? I'm here now. Be all you can be while you're here. Give everything you can give to this platform and, and make the most of this. And, I, and that's it. But that's but that's what keeps me happy, and that's what keeps me out of caring if John talks shit about me or caring right. if, exactly. if, if Joe Blow on the Internet talks shit about me because you just so lost in your process or so found in your process, not even lost. You're, you're so – ingrained aside of what you're doing that nothing affects nothing that you do it it doesn't even matter um because you dialed in on your shit you know what i'm saying and if i can if i can say anything to any listener out here like you know and and a lot may not know me a lot may not know my background but if you have like a a couple free saturdays you want to watch a movie on something to go through many swings but then to understand that the things don't mean shit i'll tell you another a cool person to follow and I never knew he would be this interesting because he was like he's so out there to some people uh uh commercially Jim Carrey Jim Carrey is one of the most interesting people to follow oh. and like he's like he, him and your mother will probably get along like he, really man listen to me he said he, he has said one thing and this is really started my track on following him he said um I wish that everybody in the world can make all the money they want to and buy all the stuff they want to 
just so they can realize that this isn't it. This isn't everything. He said because he believes like when he sees people, everybody's on this quest to get money all for the purpose of buying things to think that, hey, I've arrived in this world. And okay. so um, he talks a lot about spirituality. He talks a lot about um, just living life in, 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 a, in a spiritual state. You know what I'm saying? And then him, he is like, I'm skilled to be an actor to accept these roles. But he said, that's what I've gotten away from acting. He is like, because it just it, it, tur- it turns me into something else. And I just like being by myself because I like how I think. I like how I view the world. And, and if, if anybody wants to just like, you don't have to follow me or do my story, but Jim Carrey is a, a more uh, commercially cool guy to look at, you know, just from all of his well, success. Well, you never really think to take him serious because of his it, roles. It, but but I think that's the – Yeah, that's what will be I, interesting. I think so – taking a comedian, you're like, this is a comedian, he makes me laugh. Right. And then his level of seriousness for what he does or how he lives his daily life. Just go, Just go click on – That's YouTube. a great comment, though. Like, it is. I, I wish everyone could run through that process of accumulating everything the fuck you want, arrive there, and then – Tell me how you feel. Yeah, that that was his deal, and I'm pretty sure you you you'll have a certain portion of people like, yeah, give it to me. Um, but I I I think there's something to it, man. I think that each each of us, right, has made money and it feels good. But when you talk about fulfillment, you know what I'm saying. When you talk about the the importance of being happy, when you're talking about um just those things that you can't buy. Like, when, when, like so at some point, you go get the house. At some point, you go get the car you want. At some point, you get all these things, but the appreciation of life, you know, being able to fulfill my potential, being able to make other people happy. Like, you know, I, this was something we were doing. So we started a summer camp, and uh, and I was talking to the girl. We were preparing shirts for people, and I was like, man, this is just crazy that just this simple act of preparing shirts and, and getting snacks together, like how much this will play into somebody else's summer and knowing that you have, like, just think about this. We have 300, just in, in Youngstown, we have 300 kids and probably another 150 down here of people. If we don't do this, they don't have food tomorrow. You know what I'm saying? If we don't do this, they don't have instruction for the summer. If we don't do this, so many of these things, and you can get into the thing and say, okay, the parents should be doing that, but I don't give a damn about what you think the parents should be right. doing. But if these things don't happen, but to appreciate being able to do that, and fortunate enough to be able to do that, like that shit makes me happy. You know what I'm saying? And and then, and then with one thing I'd say is like is like run a practice on yourself and say what are the moments in my life where I felt either literally like like v- happiest or or, or or most alive like and, and, and cross reference that with money, right? Was money involved in no. those moments no. that I'll never forget? No. That's the answer. No. I I go ahead. I think that's where we need to stop at. Go ahead. Say, unless, Mo, you got some. You got no, some I mean, I, to, to, to end truth, it, I would though. say he's true because we can go play a five-on-five pickup game and just beat the random team, and I guarantee you that that, that priceless feeling of just winning a five-on-five pickup game feels a lot more important, but there's no money involved in that. I think, like, I think just things that you have as a kid, like camaraderie amongst friends and, and, and the friendship and laughter – and you know, hey, we we sat down and we got some, like Fosco moments. There's no there's no money, and <laughs> Donnie We're Fosco going crazy. You know what I'm saying? But you can appreciate. Sorry if stuff. I judged people. Sorry <laughs> if I judged people. I feel like a hypocrite. Hey, the, Sorry the, for the, judging. Hey, the new Sorry format, for judging. Get hit in the mouth. Right out the hey, page. hey, we got a hey, hey Haven. John's we got to film a disclaimer Boom. for my like right before like you know the real fast talk. Everything John says, he doesn't mean. And we got to put the punch in the mouth. Monday morning. Yeah. Right in the fucking mouth. All right. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the new format. We'll tweak it with our new uh, producer here soon and get it rock and rolling. But we want to thank uh, LinkedIn for being on the show. Absolutely. If you guys own a business and you're looking for talent, you need to be on LinkedIn. With, with I don't know how you couldn't be. No, I mean, I mean, I mean, listen, we are, and as we scale up and as we grow everything we do, LinkedIn is the spot where we look for talent. We've had success there. I know I've had success there in previous businesses. I'm sure you yeah. have at the old I'm, company as absolutely. well. So it is the spot. If you own a business or are in charge of hiring to find talent, that's where talent lives. I don't lives. know how you're going anywhere else. It's LinkedIn, LinkedIn, where talent lives. Absolutely. Can the podcast be stopped? The podcast!